So I'm going to do one other application, I think, at this point. Um, there's several I can do, but um, I guess in the end it's a case of where do I stop. And um, this series of tool, uh, videos on BLFS wasn't about covering everything in the book, um, even though I'd like to. Um, I think the only other one I'm going to do, oh, there's two actually, um, that can be quite useful, g -parted, um for graphical partitioning. Um, and it's kind of a bit of a funny one, because on one hand you think, well, g -parted on a PC is probably not that useful, because you can't edit the disk that's booted, or the partition that's booted. Um, and yet there is a benefit where you've got USB drives or external disks, um, they can be formatted and manipulated, so it has got some benefit. Um, and it's just basically a graphical front end that sits on top of Parted. So I'll install that one, and one other I'll do is X Screensaver because um, if you've never seen these uh, screensavers before, there's some really cool ones on here. So I'll start with GParted, it's probably the simpler of the two. We've got all the um, dependencies installed. So that's okay, SourceForge. I'll check the screenshot, I don't think the screensaver will be now. Okay, so she parted. And you'll remember I used this um, at the very beginning to um, remove the Apple um, APFS file system and partition and to expand the LFS partition to use the whole disk. So I've got configure here, um, optional documentation, we can remove disable doc. So let's do that. And enable xhost roost is an interim workaround to allow G to run on the way than using xhost. So I'm not going to be using that. Uh, I don't think I'll be setting or trying Wayland, so I'll just use these options here. Okay, so it's going to build documentation. Use native lib part of DM RAID support? No, so I presume it's going to use MDM, MDADM. Explicit grant root access on display? No. So it all looks good. So let's build it. Oops.
Right, so that has built. I'm going to run the tests. So there's one that's failed. Um, supported file systems. Now I have noticed that JFS Utils is not installed. I'm not going to install it. Um, so I'm guessing that that's why it's failed. Looks like this is a log file. Yeah, test. Let's have a look at that. And state of which one has failed. Um, but I'm going to take a plump that it is that one. Um, with something like this, I would make sure it did pass. So if I was to be using this Beyond Linux from scratch in anger, and I knew I'd be using Gparted, I would install JFS Utils, rerun the tests and make sure that there were no failures because obviously something like this where it's manipula manipulating the disks um, you don't want this to fail it looks like it's actually said aborted there so what I might do is run make check with the minus K to see if it will carry on after that abort no it hasn't oh well, yes it has actually yes it's actually done something with dot books and so on um, it's a bit of a shame that that test um, of the actual run doesn't state why or what caused it exactly to fail so I'm going to run make install now Um, about running sudo uh, or running the program as root there's an option here to install ssh ask pass um, and it will ask for the password to pop, uh, pop up so that might be worth installing um, I've got sudo I'll just open it up to change the color of the link Um, so let's install this now. I'll just tidy up Gparted as we've done that one. Uh, I'll leave that there because we've got some commands still to run. Um, I could actually try to run it from here. Um, as an ordinary user it won't work oh now is that because I've logged in again as myself it could be but yeah running it as sudo that makes it work and you can see there's the same uh, display that we had before um, now obviously I can't do a lot here because well as you can see they're all locked I've got a key next to them it's I can't make any changes to this disk because that's the one that's been or well, this partition which is on that disk has been booted so there's not a great deal I can do I could do um I can't even do a check actually I wonder if that's because it writes to the disk when it's checking but I can get some basic information about the partition so you can see from that we've used approximately 41 gigabytes and I guess probably at least 10% of that is downloads and tarballs I would have thought so I'll quit this I'll install this OpenSSH it, it will be used, I'm not sure if it will actually work in this environment but certainly the um, uh, higher level environments such as KDE and GNOME would, would use it ok 
Okay, what's it called? Open SSH. Oh, it's from Open SSH, is it? Okay. Didn't know that. Okay. So that explains why when I tried to download it, it already existed, because we've already installed SSH. So this looks like it's probably a tool that um, OpenSSH provides. So we'll install it. And it says the use of a contrib and a symlink is justified by the eventual necessity of a different program for that service. I'm not quite sure what that means, but as long as it works. Uh, right, yeah, let's finish tidying that up and we just need to configure sudo. And that's that. So if I do um, G part here, like I said, I don't think anything will work. Now we've got the same uh, message as we had before. Um, oh, let's do this, these commands now. Again, I don't think these will make a difference. These are more to do with the desktop environment, these files. But I'll try it. No, same message as I thought. So that's gparted, which is chapter 41. And finally, I'm going to do screen X screen saver. Uh, don't download that one to open it. So there's no dependencies for this. So I've got some simple instructions, just to copy and paste. Don't want any documentation. So what we do now is sudo ninja install, and that's that program finished. And that's in chapter 25. So I'll shut that down and move on to GDM. I have a feeling we've done this one. Oh, maybe not. No, okay. So we've got account service is required. So we've got all the dependencies for that. Build this. What does it say here about the? Okay, so there's no extra options there that I'm particularly interested in. So I'll just copy that in. There's some configuration here to paste in, and that should be done. And that's in chapter 12.
account service is complete. So go back to GDM and we need key utils. Oh, right, okay, so I've been trying to avoid MIT Kerberos all this time and um, well, key utils is optional but it looks like I'm going to have to install this um, to get the best functionality out of this. So bind utilities, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, or shall I bind utilities? Let's have a look. Um, yeah, this is not the bind uh, server, which is like the um, DNS name server program. These are just utilities, so this will be all right to install. So we've got all the dependencies for these. Let's save this link. Extract. And configure. So there was out Python, you think we'd need that, but it's to um, prevent the need for an unused Python module. So I'm going to run the configure first. Then I'm going to run each of these individually um, because what's just in the back of the mind is one of these fails. Will I know exactly which one it's failed on? take a chance at something here. I'm going to try and run these in parallel. And it's a bit risky but um, let's have a look. Right, I missed that. Let's see if I can um, bring the next one up and running. Let's see if it is actually running parallel. Didn't seem to be running particularly fast. Yeah, it isn't. So I'm going to take a chance and. Okay, that was a quick one. Let's see if we can run these in parallel. a quick one. <laughs> Maybe the longest one was the first one. Okay, obviously there's no point then. So I'll just come out of that and build the documentation. And that's done. So install packages or the programs and that's done. So that's chapter 16, bind utilities. And that's all we need, so I'm going to install Kerberos now. Uh, 
Um, some sort of synchronization facility like NTP is required, so I'm not going to install NTP. Um, it could be useful to have to keep the time up to date, but I don't really consider it to be absolutely necessary. Um, probably find in a big desktop environment like KDE or GNOME that there is settings within that to synchronize to a, a time server. So I'm just going to try and install this at the minimum. Um, because it's just a, a support for another package. Copy this config. Check if there's anything else that needs to be changed. Um, we could try this. We've got LDAP installed. Uh, I'm not sure if it would actually benefit this, but if I stick it in, and if I start the build now. Okay, that's built, so now I'm going to run tests. So it does say some may fail, so we'll see what happens.
Okay, so that has tested. Um, there was a few, well, one error at least I saw. Um, I didn't see any others, so it could be one of these ones that's mentioned here about Deja of GNU or LibC. Um, so I think that's okay, and this is only like a support package, it's not something that we'll be using or would, would have been using. I'm okay with that. So we'll install the package. And I've got some configuration here. Um, it says to consider installing some sort of password checking dictionary, which we've got. Uh, so I need to create this file. And we need to edit that file now because we need to fill in some empty spaces. So I'll use Vi. And it says you need to substitute your domain and proper hostname for occurrences of Belgarath and example org names. So example org for example I'll put mynet.org in this will be imac dot mynet dot org and again imac because that's the name of this machine mynet is the name of my domain if you haven't got one just make one up oh, right okay so Right, yes, I just noticed that, and I've missed one as well. This should be in caps, or recommended to be in caps. So mynet.org. Yeah, I just noticed this one I missed as well. mynet.org. This is what made me wonder mynet.org equals mynet.org so that should be all the configurations needed create a database so we need to change this to mynet So it needs a master key. That's created. Now you should populate the database with principles. For now, just use your regular login name or root. So it looks like we run this. Sure, if this should be runners' routes or not. Uh, presume this will be a root function. So let's put that command in and I'll just use my regular login name and password. Okay, so I can't use the kernel text as password, so I'll try kernel text one two three. So like that. Then I'll have to run this. So this now is imac dot mynet dot org. been created and then the same
command, uh, same parameters, but the command is changed to kt add. That seems to have worked. This should have created a file in etc named krb5.key tab. So, I presume I do control D out of this, yes. etc krb5.key tab. Oops. Um, it should have 600 permissions, which it has. Keeping the key tab files public access is crucial. Start the KDC daemon. Attempt to get the ticket with the following command. You will prompt with a password. After you get your ticket, you can list it with the following command. Yep, that looks like that's worked. To test the functionality of the key tab file, we run these commands. And then L. This should dump a list of, host, of the host principle along with the encryption methods used to access the principle. Short and specifies encryption methods, unless that's what these are. Create an empty ACL file that can be modified later. And looks like I'll just run the boot scripts now. Make install. KRB5 and we can start it. Let's restart, it seems to have come up a bit funny. No, that's normal. Okay, that seems to have been installed successfully. So I've marked that one off as back in chapter four, right at the very beginning. Uh, Kerberos, Nick Kerberos. So it wasn't one I intended installing, but um, it wasn't too painful to do so. So back to key utils. Let's now download this. So we'll build it with these commands. Test it with this command. Oh, that's the root user. Okay. Okay, control command not found. Let me become the root. run it here. No, it's still not working. KCTL. Um, not sure why that file is not being found. It's like it needs to be installed before the tests are run. So I'm going to install it and then try running the tests. And now run, yeah, now they're running. So it obviously needs to be installed first.
Actually, I've just noticed this. It's looking for the LSB release uh, package, which we haven't installed yet. Um, and it's not specified as a dependency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit this. I'm going to start it from scratch, but I'm going to install this LSB utils package because it is in the book and it just reads the LSB release data um, that we've already got in ETC. So that file there that we created at the end of LFS, um, it, it looks like that testing is actually using that, so it might be nice to have. So let's um, LSB tools, there we go. Let's stick that in. Is that downloading? I didn't notice if that downloaded. Let's do tools. Yeah, I think it did. Oh, it's capital LSB. LSB. No. All oh, right, not found. Okay, so um, what I need to do here is to go to the Oregon State University FTP archive and search for it here LSB tools 0 0.9 that's the correct version so I'll save link and should be good to go now yep so I'll build this and install it So if we type in LSB release minus A, you can see it displays information from that file in a slightly different format. So that's chapter 12, LSB tools, and I'll go back to the key utils now, rebuild that and retest it. Build it and I'll install it again. And now I'll test what I've just built. And you can see it's not coming up with that error anymore about the LSB release file. So it's obviously using that information as part of the test, probably just for the logging, I imagine.
Okay, well that seemed to all pass, so that's good. Just tidy up now. And mark that off as complete in chapter 9. Key utils. Shut that down, and we've got gnome session next. Runtime dependency. Let's see. Right, this looks like we would be getting involved more with GNOME. Is that GNOME desktop there as well, was it? GNOME shell. Yeah, I think I'll ignore this because um, it looks like a lot of this is to do with the actual GNOME desktop. And I don't want to get too wrapped up in that at the moment. I wanted to do a separate set of videos, still part of this BLFS set, but um, to do a sequence of videos just on GNOME, installing GNOME, so I'll ignore them for now, being the runtime run time dependencies. So add a group and a user, adapt GDM, to build without system D present. Oh, might help if I extracted. And downloaded it. Okay, so I'll do this adaptation and then we'll create the build directory, change into it and copy this meson command and check if there's anything worth setting here. So uh, that might be useful initial if you do switch back out to other terminals while you've got a graphical session running. User switch if it did not create the ETC LFS release file or distribution auto detection. Okay, so we've got that, so don't need that. GDM X session equals true, that's already there. So let's go with that. Um, so those settings look good. I'll run Ninja now. Uh, I'll just take, oh, not too long. Um, now install it. There's no test suite. Okay, I just realised we're installing a desktop manager here. Um, so I'm not sure how this is going to play at the moment. I've never done this this way before but let's continue with the build. This will cause it to start up automatically and we can modify the init default what this will do is it will cause it to start the graphical environment automatically so if we have a look at the init tab you'll see where is it here that five was a three which the three is the um, multi-user 
with networking text log on screen and five is the GUI interface um, GUI login screen so that's been installed chapter 33 um, ideally I wouldn't have wanted to install it there had I realized what was going on um, not to worry so GDM is installed there's actually a chance it will fail because we haven't got the runtime dependencies come to think of it so I might have to revert some of these changes um, so what I'll do is I'll shut that down I'm going to quit that quit this I'll tidy up first Um, I'm going to come out of this session, log out of this. Right, something's happened here, I'm not sure what. Again, something, probably some of the tests seem to have um, sent stuff to the, the login screen, uh, to the login session, that, that session that was running. Um, so I'm going to do a control delete here, restart the PC to make sure everything's loaded um, because there were some things earlier on that I did that affect the, affected the environment so I want to make sure that that environment is the default so when X to, uh, well, TWM and Xterm load that those environment variables are actually set so I've got the chime grub menu press enter and it's booting I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here. It may not go to the graphical login. No, it hasn't. That's probably there may be some settings actually with X in it. Come to think of it, um, but that's not a problem. So I'll log in. Yes, I did a mistake there. Hopefully this still works. Yes, it does. Okay, so at least that's complete, ready for when I do build GNOME desktop environment. But for now, I'll get this screensaver installing, or downloading at least, and install this. So, um, got a little set to run in here and configure with set UID hacks. This which allows some demos to be installed. Set UID root, which is needed in order to, order to ping other hosts. So, I'm not going to do that because that could potentially be. Um, A security issue. What's happened here? Oh, I put configuring this somehow. I've pasted it in twice. Right, that's better. That's a bit strange. So I'll build this.
Right, well, that's built and no test suite, so I'm going to make install. And as we've got PAM installed, we need to create the PAM config file. And that's it. Now I'm not sure how to run this. Yes, that's worked. Uh, settings. Um, as you can see, there's various types of screensaver here. Um, I'm not sure this will actually work um, within TWM. I guess I could try. Let's set it to one. Um, but you can see this first one's come up as a preview we can do to see the screensaver actually working um, and within each screensaver there are various settings that can be modified to adjust how the screensaver works and as you click down you can see there are many strange weird and wonderful screensavers some of which are quite uh, mesmerizing you can spend quite a bit of time just looking at these and um, you know, looking at them, it looks like it's deselected certain ones that don't work for whatever reason. Um, looks like it's trying to use a software raster of, rasterizer for them for some reason. Um, but yeah, there's there's some pretty neat screensavers here, and as you can see, there's quite a few. There's I'm not sure how many, probably 70 or 80. And maybe this previews aren't working in the window because it's not full screen. Yeah, the full screen works. So maybe on the two on this um, desktop, it's not using 3D at all. But going full screen, it can switch to uh, 3D and use OpenGL. So for example, that one's not working, but go full screen you can see the GL is working fine um, I'm gonna leave this for one minute to see if this does work if my mouse will stop wiggling around um, oh yeah there's more options there and you can even use power management as well um, but yeah I'm going to see if this actually works I've never tested this Let's pick one that. Okay, well, the broken recordings there was because I'd run out of disk space. Um, all the BLFS videos are waiting on my hard disk to be processed, um, which is what I'll be doing a little bit later today to resume posting them on YouTube. Um, but what I've done here um, is I've disconnected my mouse to stop it wobbling, and I just want to see if this will actually come on with the screen same within TWM I've never tested this before I didn't know whether it is part of the screen save X screen saver functionality that causes the screen saver to come on or if it's actually the desktop environment or window manager that um, window environment that causes all oh right so it does look like it's X screen saver it's just faded the screen okay looks like it couldn't switch to it for some reason but it looks like it did attempt to blank the screen. So that's that test complete. Um, so I'll put this back to 10 minutes. Uh, it was. And I'll just shut this down for now. And mark off X screen saver. Which is chapter 41. So I think that's probably the last utility there are one or two others I maybe might have wanted to have demonstrated maybe the other browsers as well but um, for this series of BLFS um, it's not really something I wanted to do particularly so the next um, set of videos within the BLFS series will be all about the graphical environments themselves so that's the um, display managers which allow you to log in um, which instead we've already installed one but haven't configured it to be used by the looks of it. There, 
there is a setting I think in XinitRC which needs to be made to tell it which display manager to use. Um, then there's four window managers. Um, I'll attempt to install all of them. And finally I'll install the big ones which are KDE and GNOME um, to demonstrate those being installed. Looking through we've probably installed already half of GNOME as it is. Um, which is a good thing really because a lot of the GNOME um, packages are quite tiny and a bit, there's a lot of them to install. Now there are a lot for KDE but you can aut automate them a lot of them to some extent because the installation for a lot of the packages are quite similar plus you can choose which applications you want to install so we'll be seeing that. I've just left the um, terminal again and I noticed that the screensaver had come on and it hadn't actually quit this window so it's dumped um, a load of messages to the screen so I'll see I need to press Control c there to actually stop the screensaver program that was running in the background even though I had quit the um, GUI window so I need to just tidy this up and shut the tab and I think I marked that off didn't I? Let's get one. 